Hello, everyone, and welcome to Storytime with Miss Abby. Today, we will be reading The Mystery of Edom Hall, authored and illustrated by John Kelly and Kathy Tinknell. So let's go grab your favorite stuffy and get settled in for another reading adventure. After an excellent breakfast, a jolly nice letter arrived from Dr. Hunter, the new owner of Edom Hall. He was inviting Glenda and me for a weekend of free gourmet food. It was to begin that very night, so Glenda had only seven hours to pack. We had just enough time for an afternoon snack before we set off. We had a bracing drive up to Edom Hall. Though Glenda was slightly spooked by the old road through the woods, she was convinced there were strange noises out there. Silly bird. It was my tummy rumbling. I must say, it was a bit of a disappointing welcome, with the door wide open and no lights, staff, or food anywhere to be seen. We were about to turn tail for home when Glenda spotted a note on the hallway table. It was addressed to Horace and Glenda Porkfowler. My dear guests, welcome to my home, Edom Hall. Due to pressures of business, I am unable to join you tonight, but I've designed this house to offer a fully automated dining experience. Your every dietary whim can be satisfied by the push of a button or the flick of a switch. I am delighted to offer you the chance to play a part in the finest dining experience in culinary history. And I will meet you personally in the bandstand on Sunday morning for a final mouthwatering surprise. An opportunity such as this can only occur once in any lifetime. So until then, eat, drink, and be merry. Your very special friend, Dr. A. Hunter. He seemed like a splendid chap, after all even if he couldn't spell. We went to our rooms to change for dinner. Dr. Hunter seemed to be a bit of a collector, as well as a scientist. Glenda was fascinated by the works of art displayed on the walls, but I told her I prefer my works of art displayed on a plate. Ha 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 ha. Dr. Hunter must really be a brain, I remarked at dinner. He laid out a marvelous spread with his jolly clever robot thingamabobs. Odd decor, though. Glenda was not at all impressed, but I thought the portrait over the fireplace was rather good, especially the way the eyes seemed to follow our every move. Proper art, I say. Saturday morning, we had a long breakfast and found a full picnic hamper waiting for us in the hall. We spent the morning exploring the grounds we spotted the bandstand and a poster advertising a pie feast here on Sunday. It was a shame we'd miss it. We'd have departed by then. The rest of the day passed in a blur of wonderful non-stop food. We did a bit of exercise and managed to work up a respectable appetite for our evening meal. We were so full, I didn't even eat dessert. First time ever. That night, I thought to close my eyes for a few seconds while Glenda applied her lotions. But when I opened them again, the old girl was snoring contentedly beside me. My stomach, however, was far from content. It was grumbling. I decided to pop downstairs for a tiny snackette. It was a long hike to the kitchen. You'd think a clever chap like Dr. Hunter would have put in an elevator and there were far too many locked doors throughout the place. I was ravenous by the time I found the kitchen. It was odd. There was no light in the kitchen and no robot helpers either. I had to fend for myself. Dr. Hunter was obviously a keen cook though. The capital chap kept a very well-stocked fridge. I went back to bed 
eventually, with a few midnight treats for Glenda. The next day, Sunday, after a leisurely final breakfast, we made our way to the bandstand. I have to say, it was very poorly constructed and swayed most alarmingly as we climbed. There was a loud crack as we both squeezed inside, and since Dr. Hunter was nowhere to be seen, we thought we really ought to leave before we broke anything else. Although we searched for Dr. Hunter, we couldn't find him and decided to set off. We hoped to get home in time for a late lunch. As we left, a coach full of guests was arriving for the pie feast. Dr. Hunter must have been too busy making arrangements to give us our surprise. Never mind, but it's a shame we never got to say goodbye and thank you, of course. I wonder just what sort of pie they had. The end. Thanks for joining us today here at Storytime with Miss Abby. We hope you enjoyed the story and we can't wait for you to come and visit us again soon.